Hello everybody, my name is Master Krenz. I am the Master Instructor here at Martial Arts America. Uh, today I'm gonna do, a, it's one of a series of videos I'm gonna put together uh, on our personal safety portion of our curriculum from our basic, uh, basic curriculum for basic students, beginner students. It's good, it's a great review though for all students. Now, to make this really effective and help people really learn this and understand this, I put together a, an actual quiz. So. Uh, we'll be posting this video up online and what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to watch the video and wait first of all before you do anything make sure for the kids make sure you ask your mom and dad every single time for permission before you do anything okay make sure you let them know what you're going to do what you're going to watch if you're going to practice this stuff after you watch it which you should do the only way you'll remember it the only way you'll get good is to practice but make sure you ask permission every single time so here's how the system the process works is you will watch the video, watch it a couple times if you want to, two or three times at least maybe, because the goal is to learn as much as you can. Then you're going to, your mom or dad will download this quiz. It looks just like this, Personal Safety Seminar number one, the before curriculum. You download the quiz and you take the quiz. When you're done, give it to somebody to correct it for it because I have, the answer key will also be online. So moms or dads, you can print out the answer key and the quiz. Take the quiz, see how you do. Have your mom and dad check it off or you're somebody, check it off, check off the ones that aren't right. So maybe you miss, uh, there's like 60 questions. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, comprehensive. But I really want you to learn this material, especially this particular piece of curriculum is probably the biggest video. But check off, see the ones that you got wrong. Okay, sit down, watch the video again, one or two or three more times. Go back and take the quiz again and keep doing this cycle. You can't sit there with the quiz in your hand while you watch. I want you to watch, focus, listen, learn, then go take the quiz, okay? For the really young kids, mom and dad, you can work with them and help them out, especially there may be some words that they don't know or don't quite understand. I'm gonna to try to explain those, any of those words that I use today. So, um, the quiz and the answer key will be up on buildinggreatcharacter.com in the library. You'll see it'll be posted up there, it'll be a PDF. You can just download and print. Okay, so the first one we're working on is called our Befores Curriculum, okay? Our Befores Curriculum is, so, and actually here's what the quiz looks like. It's pages of questions like this. It's all fill in the blanks, okay? Um, it is, our goal is, is in the Befores Curriculum is, what do you do before someone grabs you, pushes you, or hits you? Okay? It's important. So I'm going to go through a few principles with you here first before we even get into the curriculum. So our first goal is always to avoid a fight first. Whatever we can do, it's not to be there. If it's someone we know someone's aggressive or wants to hurt us or do something they shouldn't do us, avoid that situation. Always avoid a fight first. That's our number one goal. If we can't avoid a fight, then our goal is to either walk away or run away. Get away. Get out of the situation. Get out of the scenario, okay? Remember, there's never a winner in a fight. There's never a winner when two people fight. If we can't walk away or run away, we will try to de-escalate the situation. That's one of the big words, de-escalate. We use our words, we talk to them, we say, hey, just relax, I don't wanna fight, I don't wanna, you know, hey, let's just, you know, let's be friends or let's just agree to disagree, but we want to de-escalate, bring the energy down. I tried, if, you know, if you've got friend, you've got someone there you need to protect, there's not an exit out of the room that you can get out of, de-escalate. Use your words, use your body language to calm things down. Do whatever you can do to not fight, okay? And the last step is if we cannot de-escalate, we will fight, okay? If we have to fight, we fight to get away quickly and safely, that's important. We're not there to win, because again, there's no winner in a fight. Our goal is to get away. Do as little as you possibly can. Do just enough to be able to get away, get out of there. If you've got a little brother, sister, or somebody with you, bring them with you. You do just enough to escape. We're not teaching you how to fight here at Martial Arts America. We're teaching you just the opposite. How not to fight. We're giving you, and I'll go through that one in just a minute here, so I get them in, in I'm kind of trying to do this in order of the quiz, so you really hear these things. Okay, remember, how you train the fire, the focus, the intensity is how you will perform. How you train is how you'll perform. That's why the instructors really try to get you to be focused and do your very best and not just kind of like go through the motions. 
What you do in this classroom, is in your classroom, here at the school, is how you'll perform when you need to do the skills someplace else, at home, at school, uh, on the street somewhere, in a parking lot. Train for intensity here so you've got it out there. Befores, again, are what we do before. So it's B-4, but it's the word before someone pushes, hits, shoves, or grabs you. Okay? Remember this, action versus reaction, which is quicker. It's always action. That's why we're practicing now. If you have to think about what you're going to do when you're out there, you'll be too slow. You won't have enough time. So that's why repetitions are so important. If you're watching this at home, do it 50 times, 100 times, 500 times, 1,000 times or more. If you do that, it will become an automatic action. You will be safer. Okay, You'll have that skill when you need it. Again, here, at Martial Arts America, we are not teaching you how to fight. Just the opposite. We are empowering you with the knowledge, the skills, and the confidence not to fight. Someone that doesn't have any martial arts skills, any self-defense or personal safety training, they really don't have a lot of choices when something gets intense and someone's going to maybe hit them. All they can do is hit back. Here, you're learning, especially the befores. It's what do I do without having to hit? It's movement. It's keeping them away. It's getting to a safe, safe distance. In the befores themselves, there's no hitting. Now, it's sometime in the future, you'll combine this. Someone continues to come at you. You might use a couple befores and then a strike. We'll talk more about that in the tools and targets section as we go through those skills. But our goal here is to empower you with the skills, the knowledge, and the confidence not to fight. Remember the person who feels bad, doesn't have a lot of confidence, they're gonna, it, their ego's gonna get in the way. They're gonna say, oh, I gotta prove that I can beat this person up. The person with confidence just walks away knowing there's no reason to fight. For moms and dads and all of our students, give yourself, give your children the permission to do whatever is necessary to be and stay safe. You are worth protecting and keeping safe. If we tell the kids that no matter what someone does to them, don't hit back, don't fight back, we're telling them they're not worth protecting. Now our goal is to never to hit. We want to do whatever we can. There may come a time though that you may have to use your skills, a punch or a kick or strike, to get away. So give yourself permission. It's okay to defend yourself. It's not okay for someone to hurt you. You do not hit someone if they tease you or call you names, but if they're trying to physically hurt you, you do whatever it takes to get away. The purpose of before is to get to a safe distance away from an attacker. That's critical. And we're going to talk about that at the end of this thing. I'm going to talk about what's called the safety gap and stuff. We're going to go over that. The primary question you need to ask when we're thinking about self-defense and personal safety is, are you ready? So if someone might ask you, well, what would you do if they, if they pushed you or if they shoved you? The question we use for training is, are you ready? If you're not ready, if I was just standing there, someone ambushed me and just came up and hit me, it would be very different that if someone's in front of me and telling me they're gonna hit me or they're pissed at me and they're gonna knock me down and I couldn't walk away, I couldn't run away and I had my hands up and I was ready to defend myself, I'll do something completely different. So are you ready is our key question. By ready, we mean mentally, emotionally, and physically ready. Mentally, have I made this as I've recognized that there's danger here. And mentally, I've already said, okay, if I have to defend myself, I'm gonna use my skills. Emotionally, Yes, there's fear. We all have fear. Courage is not the absence of fear, but it's acting in spite of your fear. So emotionally, I said, I'm afraid, but I'm still gonna act. I'm still gonna do whatever it takes. And physically, I understand that it's important that my hands come up. I get into a good body position, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. But am I ready? Are my hands up? Am I focused? Am I paying attention? Do I, have I looked at their body language? Am I breathing correctly? So we're gonna talk about all those things. If you're not ready to fight, you will instinctively freeze, which literally, it is what it sounds like, your body will freeze. It might last a moment, a couple seconds, could last three or four seconds. But you will either freeze, or you will move back or away from the attack. That's instinctive. You don't have to train or practice that. You will automatically do that. We have built those instinctive responses into the training. We're gonna train exactly the way you would naturally move. So again, if you're not ready to fight, you will instinctively freeze and or move away or back from the attack. All right, 
The first one, and I'm, I'm using this because I want to make sure I cover everything that's on the quiz. I don't want someone to have to come to me later and say, sir, that you didn't cover that one question. So I'm doing my best to make sure I cover everything in detail here. All right. The first one of the befores is called deviation. Simply, deviation means get off line. So if you're the bad guy, you're the camera right in front of me is the bad guy, we have a, a magical line or imaginary line between my chin and your chin. That's the line. So if you reach out and try to punch me or try to grab me, I need to move offline. I just need to get off that line. I want to make sure that whatever happens goes by me rather than to me. All right, deviation is a simple skill for not getting hit or grabbed. Remember, when you practice, if you want to move to the left, your left, your left leg should move first. I don't want to step across my body. If I want to deviate to the left, I move to the left. If I deviate to the right, I move to the right. That's how we practice. Now in real life, you may mix it up, it's okay. The key is, I told you, we want to do 100 of these, 500, 1,000 of these. If you have a partner and all they do is they just put their hand up, they just put their hand out, and all you do is just step off line, step off line, step off line, practice that motion, okay? So, left to the left, right to the right. If you're not ready, you will instinctively move back. If something's coming straight at you and you didn't really expect it, you will just step straight back. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm still online, so that's, that's a problem there we deal with. But at least I'm further away, it's harder for them to grab me or hit me. It's an instinctive response. Now remember this, how far, oh wait, when you deviate, excuse me. When you deviate, you want your head and your feet to move together. I don't want to just move my foot and I don't want to move just my head. Either way, something stays online. So if I go to the left, my head moves and my foot moves. I go right, my head moves and my foot moves. See how I get offline. Now, the movement of the head is pretty incredible. If something's coming at my head, even if I'm surprised, a straight punch straight at my head, how far do I need to move my head so I don't get hit? It's only about three or four inches, the distance from your nose to your ears. Here comes the punch. If I move just that far, it's going to go past me. So I don't have to go, oh my gosh, way out here. Oh my gosh, way out here. I want to move just enough to not get hit. It's quicker, it's shorter. I want to practice short little quick movements. That's what's going to keep me safe. So three to four inches. Your head and your feet got to work together, guys. If my head goes this way and my feet go that way, it's not going to work. And I, and I know you're laughing and thinking, well, no, I would never do that. You know what? It happens sometimes unless you practice. Your feet say, let's go this way. Your head goes, no, let's go this way. So we ended up something like this. Your feet and head have to work together, guys. When you're training, don't return to your starting position. Now, right here, I'm just standing in line. When I do this with, in a moment with Mrs. Olson, you're going to see I'm not going to return to my starting position. And this is what I mean. I step off line, I deviate. Now. For training purposes, I'm stepping back in front of the camera. But when we're actually doing this as a training exercise, we want to step offline, because if I step back in front of them, they're just going to hit me again. When I'm here to the side, they now have to turn and face me. So you'll see we'll do that later. So I step offline and I stay there. When you're practicing, don't go back to the same position. That's a training problem. That's a, a bad habit, bad training habit. We need to break that one. Keep your eyes focused on the attacker. When I step out here, I don't look over here right now. I need to focus on you. Later on, we'll learn about what's called scan and assess. For right now, as I move, I keep my eyes on that person, where they're at. So I'm looking at you here. I step over here. I look at you over here. Remember to bring your hands up. If they aren't already up, bring your hands up. This is a critical part, okay? If I'm ready and my hands are up, that's great, but sometimes it's a surprise. I've been ambushed. So as I step, I also bring my hands up into the on guard position, or, or actually what's, we're going to talk about that in just a moment. And make sure you turn your face. So as I step, I turn and face them. I look at them. I want to see everything that's going on. I don't want to get surprised again. So those are some of the simple principles for the deviation. It's get off line. It's before number one. Okay? Before number two is called pushing hands. Okay? And during this one, now I'm going to bring Ms. Olsen in a minute, and we're going to demonstrate these as we do them. Okay, before we start. You will be able to use pushing hands when you are ready, mentally, emotionally, 
physically ready and your hands are up. And that's key. That's critical. My hands aren't up. I'm not going to be fast enough. My hands are up. I'm ready. I'm in good position. I expected something might happen. I'm ready to defend myself. So that's what I would use. Pushing hands. During pushing hands, you will step and move in one direction. So I might choose to go to my right and I push with my hands in the other direction. And we're going to demonstrate this in a minute as well. So I move one, my left foot goes, I push to my right. If I go to my right, I push to my left. So I create a little bit more space. Now, as I push, don't extend your arms, guys. Too much, too much. Everything's wide open here now. So I push just enough to not get grabbed, just enough to not get hit. So again, how far do you move the attacker's arms? Just enough to not get hit or grabbed. When doing pushing hands, less is better. Meaning, short, quick motions, short, quick motions. Less movement is better. Use your voice while you're moving. And I'll, I, we have an entire section on this, uh, the power of the big voice. So I'll talk more about that. But use your voice while you're moving. Which direction should you move? The answer is a little bit unique. It's whatever is the safest and the quickest. Okay? What do I mean? Well, if there was something over here and I couldn't move that way, that's not a safe direction to go. If my body instinctively goes this way, go, that's fine. I want to move quickly, but I need to go as to the safest direction possible. If there's a curve, if there's something that I might trip me, I want to move that direction. So I want to move to the safest and quickest position. Okay? Which direction do you move versus a straight punch, a push, or a grab? That's called to the outside. And we're going to demonstrate that in just one moment. And which way do you want to move against a hooking or a haymaker? A hooking punch or a haymaker against those you either go, so if it's coming this way, I get away, or I go back. So I'm going to demonstrate both of those right now. We're going to demonstrate the, the pushing hands with Mrs. Olson. So here we go. All right, so she's out here. So, all right, so from here, when she comes at me, so she'll put her right hand. Let's just go one hand, okay? So I talked a little bit about inside and outside. Which is the best direction to go? What's quickest? But there's also the term called inside and outside. If I were to move this way, She's got her other hand up. She could attack with this. She could kick me and hit me. This is called the inside. If I move over here, this is the outside. I'm outside of her arm. I can now, she can't really hit me with that. She can't hit me with that leg. She might hit me with this. So if you can move to the outside, that's the best. But if you move to the inside back side, it's okay. My hands are here, okay? So again, here we go. So uh, pushing hands, I step and push. Not way out there. See, I don't need her hand to go that far. I just need her hand to just barely miss me. And now I'm looking and I'm square. So I should put the other hand out. I'll go here. I'm here. Looking with my hands. Now I end up here. We go to what's called an assertive, a strong, confident stance or assertive stance. Confident or assertive. Here. What it is, hands up. I'm looking at them. One leg is back. Weight is on the balls of my feet. I'm not flat footed. I'm not on my heels. Hands down is not confident. Hands up, most important, palms away. Palms away, this is the universal stop sign. Anywhere in the world, if you do this, people recognize that means stop or stay away. Now, I would be verbalizing too. So, as she comes at me, I and then, stop, stay away, stay away, stay away. And you see, now I move back slightly, okay, to what we would call our safety kit. Hands come back up, so I'm here. Now, I'm not gonna step back, if I was training, I go here, now if she comes at me again, I'm gonna step, oh, that's okay, I move. She comes at me again, I move. It doesn't make any difference. Now, when your partner's attacking, make sure they just push straight at you, punch straight at you. Don't go where you think I'm going. So she's gonna come in, I step to the side. It's okay, I'm inside, but I then move back and stay in a safe position. So, distance is critical. The purpose of a before is to get away safely, get to a safe distance, I could then try to talk some more and de-escalate. I might find an avenue to run away, but I move one direction, push the other. That's why it's called pushing hands. All right, so let's go into the next one now. All right, so from here, it's the next number three. Before number three is called pressing hands. Pressing hands. You will use pressing hands when you are not mentally, physically, or emotionally ready. But my hands are up. 
this is great. For whatever reason, I was smart enough to put my hands up. I recognized there might be something wrong. This guy's maybe aggressive, but I, but I didn't expect him to reach out and hit me. So my hands are up and I'm talking because an assertive stance or a confident stance is one foot back, hands up. Hey, how you doing? You know, I could be up here. My hands could be doing this. I'm just relaxed. You know, just, hey, how you doing? My hands are up. We're just talking and stuff, you know. Hey, it's really good to see you. Uh, I'm really sorry that what I said upset you or got you angry. I really didn't mean to do that. And you notice what I do every once in a while I'm here and I'm putting my hands out. It's just pressing away. It's just pushing, saying, hey, stay away. Okay. But I didn't think you were all of a sudden going to lunge at me. So my hands are up, but I'm not mentally ready. I'm not in the fight. I'm not ready to defend myself. Okay. During pressing hands, you will instinctively retreat or step back. 